Hi, I'm Sydney with Wildflower Mama, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made this wedding cake entirely out of zebra cakes. Before you get started, take a look at the comment section below. I've listed out different links to products I use to make this cake, like the cake boards and all kinds of different things that you'll need, um, a list of tools that will be really helpful when recreating this cake. For this cake, I'm using my vanilla buttercream recipe. It's on my website and linked below. Uh, you can certainly use any flavor buttercream that you like. I just thought that vanilla would be classic wedding cake frosting. But before we get started with the frosting, something that I didn't show here that I really wish I did, unpackage all of your zebra cakes and just practice building them up like building blocks and get the size, figure out how tall, how wide, and what pattern you wanna use. I wanted to go with a very simple circle pattern, just very traditional look. Um, when I shared this video on TikTok, I got several comments, you know, why didn't you just leave it as a hexagon? Well. A hexagon is very tricky to frost and I've never done it, but I know that it's a real pain in the butt. So I wanted to keep it very easy for my very first wedding cake. If you wanna try the hexagon or any kind of a different shape, or if you recreate this cake exactly as I did, I would love to see it. Email me a picture, tag me on social media. I would just, I would love that. I wanna see it. I'm so excited for you. This cake, how it is, eight boxes of zebra cakes and four times my buttercream recipe on my website. 14 cups of frosting to make this cake and I did have some left over. While you may not need all 14 cups of buttercream, it's gonna be pretty close. Maybe you wanna add some buttercream flowers or some kind of piping work. It'll be nice to have that extra buttercream. Also, if you don't use it immediately, you can freeze it and it's just so nice because I hate making buttercream. Something else I wish I would have done when I made this cake is freeze the zebra cakes before you frost. I always freeze my cake layers before I decorate a cake. Um, I'll chill them in the freezer overnight or for at least a few hours to get them nice and cold. That helps the buttercream set so much quicker and makes it so much more firm and sturdy for creating the structure of the cake. Um, just put all those zebra cakes in the freezer for at least an hour. Since they're not like coming hot out of the oven, I think an hour would be good to get them nice and cold. Again, that's just gonna help that kind of brick laying process um, help that buttercream set so much quicker and leave a lot less room for squishing and sliding. It's gonna be just so much easier. Another thing was that when I did cut the cake at the end, I noticed that there were lots of places where the cakes had smooshed apart and there were like big pockets of buttercream uh, just kind of randomly in there. So the freezing of the cakes will prevent that from happening as well. For this first part, while you're laying the foundation and you're putting your design together and you're building the base of the cake, don't be too concerned about how it looks at this point. It's gonna look terrible. It's gonna look crazy. So this was a two day project. We are going to create the structure of the cake on day one, let it freeze in the freezer overnight, creating a firm and sturdy foundation for the beautification process, which will then take place on day two. When you are laying the frosting between the layers, you'll wanna put it on pretty thick but then you're also gonna wanna take a good bit of that off. So you're gonna wanna put it on thick so that there's plenty of frosting to work into the cracks and the in-betweens of all of the cakes. Now, like I said, we don't want them to squish out too far apart or you're gonna get some pretty thick pockets of buttercream between those cakes. That's why having the cakes frozen ahead of time is really gonna help with the setting process. So ideally, you're gonna put a big heaping blob of buttercream on this layer of chilled zebra cakes. You're going to spread it very gently back and forth. If you have a turntable, use your turntable to smooth it down, um, pushing the rest, the excess buttercream out to the sides. And just, just enough buttercream is gonna settle between the cakes to hold the bricks together. <laughs> Where we really want to keep the frosting very, very thin is gonna be on the outside of the cake. You want it to be thin, but that you also may need to kind of fill in some gaps or some like jagged edges or balance out some different parts that may be a tad uneven depending on the pattern that you have laid. If anything, err on the side of excess at this point. You don't want to have any gaps or to some really big like crevices or divots in the side or on the top. It would be better for it to be a little bit bumpier 
uh, or rounder. Because then tomorrow on day two, we're going to take a hot knife or your bench scraper or spatula and we're going to start chiseling away. We can always take away the buttercream, but we can't at that point, we don't really wanna go backwards and complete the crumb coat. We wanna have the crumb coat already done. We wanna have this base layer already done. We don't really wanna go backwards and have to spend more time adding in more frosting and balancing things out. So for this first tier, I am using a 12 inch cake board. Depending on the size of your cake, you might want a bigger or a smaller cake board. If this is for a real wedding, you should probably use a cake drum, not a cardboard, because the cardboard is gonna like crinkle and collapse on you. It's not gonna be able to support the weight and it's just not that pretty. So if this is for a real wedding, I would suggest investing in a nice pretty wrapped cake drum. I'll link some uh, below. But when it comes to the second tier, since we're stacking them and we need that cake to have a pretty firm foundation on the bottom, we want that cake board to be the exact size of that cake. So whatever the diameter is of that top tier, we need the same size cake board underneath, or it could be slightly smaller. You don't want it bigger because you don't want to see it. So I'm using a six inch round cake board. We're gonna start chiseling away at the excess buttercream that we built up here to create a nice flat, smooth surface on the top and the sides. And I'm using my bench scraper. It has a nice sharp edge on it. Um, if you don't have a bench scraper, just use um, a really sharp knife. <laughs> Be very careful. You can use um, a sharp knife, run it under some hot water and dry it off and it should cut really nicely for you. So once you've kind of got everything leveled out and smoothed down, um, we're gonna add a few more layers of buttercream. Again, depends on how much you like buttercream or if you're making this cake for somebody else uh, in their wedding. Do they like a lot of frosting? Add some more frosting. You wanna add at least one or two more layers, maybe three if you're a real freak about the frosting. This is gonna establish two things. One, we wanna make sure that the cake is coated with frosting. I know the zebra cakes are frosted, but it's not like buttercream. It's just that like waxy frosting, almost like a candy coating. Two, it's going to just further establish the roundness and the, the beautiful appearance of the cake. So your cake, after one or two more layers of frosting, should really now start to appear very smooth, very round, very flat and straight on the top and the sides. I use my bench scraper for this. That's the tool that I highly, highly recommend. Or you could use an angled spatula. You could use any kind of, um, even like a knife. I don't know. I've seen a couple of different tutorials online for some alternatives to bench scrapers. British Girl Bakes has a really great one that you should check out. I think I'll link it below. Different ways to decorate a cake and to get smooth sides without cake tools. It's excellent. So if you don't have a bench scraper and if you're not in a place to invest in many tools right now, definitely check out that video. And to keep things a little less messy, there is a six inch round cake board, cardboard cake board. Um, under that top tier for support purposes. And while I'm decorating, I do have that then resting on a larger cake board while I'm using my turntable and adding the finishing touches. Does that make sense? I feel like I said cake board a thousand times and just used a lot of the same words over and over again. If you have questions or if that was super confusing, please let me know. So for this little decorative pattern I did here at the end, I just used my angled spatula and I just swirled it around the cake like such. It's really self-explanatory if you just watch there. You could use a spoon, uh, you could use a butter knife, you could use whatever. If you're making this for a really good friend, you could probably just use your finger. Uh, don't use a toe, that would be gross. These are just some plastic straws that I bought from Hobby Lobby. They were in the cake decorating section. I think they were just literally called jumbo straws. They we're kind of nice because they have this little point at the end, kind of like the Capri Sun straws that really help you um, get very precisely down in the cake. And so you place those by just kind of pushing very gently down into the cake. Once you reach the bottom of that cake, 
tier, you wanna push it all the way to the bottom where it's touching the cake board. And once you get down there, then you lift it out a little bit, cut off the top, and then push it the rest of the way down in there so that it should be right level with the top of the cake. You can kind of see me doing that in the video here. You want to place them within the diameter of the top tier of your cake. So then when I, the cake just and then I just used some silk flowers for the toppers that I got from the Lobby of Hobby. And that's that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and click the like button. Um, it matters way more to me than it should. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any more of this totally worthwhile and life-changing content. Thank you.